Photographers, retouchers, in Photoshop, best grain on the internet. There is nothing else I can find out there. It's here, it's free. Okay, let's get into it. And I'm gonna make a copy of this layer just to demonstrate something to you. And what I wanna demonstrate is why I do not like the noise filter. Um, generally, when you're doing the quick and nasty, it's gonna be around 2.5% to 3%. Anywhere around there is probably gonna satisfy you. You know your values usually. And that's what you kind of get out of it, which in a previous classroom episode that I was saying to Broily Vargas, and Broily, I hope you're watching because I told you I would do this one for you. There you go, it is just a gray mush. That is not grain, that does not, I know it helps to hide when people airbrush and overcorrect skin, but it's, it's just a gray mush. So what I'd like to show you is how to do this properly. Okay, I'm gonna switch that off and we're gonna keep it there for comparisons later on. So, with your background layer active, the first thing that you do is you create a new layer. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill that layer with a 50% gray, down towards the bottom, 50% gray. Don't worry about the blending mode over here because it's a layer on its own and it's not gonna change the blending mode of the layer over here. So 50% gray. Now, the reason why I put in a 50% gray is because when I set my layer mode, my blending mode to overlay, overlay is, is sort of a contrast blending mode but what happens with a 50% gray is that you're not favoring the highlights or the shadows let me give you a quick demonstration over here and if i fill this layer with black and it's on overlay it's going to favor the shadows so what overlay does generally is that it looks at the image underneath your layer when it blends and it favors this so by being black it's favoring the shadow areas if I were to switch over and fill with white, it would favor the highlight areas. Okay, so by just having a 50% gray layer, it's not favoring neither the highlights nor the shadows, and it has no effect. So what that's gonna allow me to do is just to show off the texture of the grain. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the bottom so what I'm doing, I'm still using the noise filter. Okay, I'm gonna add noise, and just so that it's a relatively obvious grain, I'm gonna to go to about 10%. Now that's probably harder than what you would do when you normally adding a noise filter in Photoshop. But once we've added that, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna blur this noise ever so slightly already you see it over there okay with something like this I'd probably go 0 0.5 all right now when I just click my hand over here that's the original noise preview and that is with a bit of a Goazian blur so is this starting to make sense this now is starting to look like typical film grain it's really worth it to pay careful attention to how noise filters versus an overlay affects the shadows, midtones, and highlight areas of your image because anyone that's familiar with real film will know that your grain is different in your shadows, midtones, and highlight areas where a noise filter just puts a blanket over the image. By using it as an overlay layer, it will maintain the integrity of the original contrast of your image. So what I want to show you now quickly, I'm going to switch on the above layer of how you used to do it. That is a noise filter. That is not film grain. Let's switch it off. That over there is film grain. That is much closer to film grain. Okay, what I'm quickly going to do over here is I'm going to switch this one off again and that's our original image. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. I'm going to switch that blending mode to overlay. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a much harsher grain. Okay, so let's go up to 20%. All right, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. And the more you blur the grain, I will generally never go over one pixel. I find that if you go over one pixel in the Gaussian blur, it starts really detracting from the image. So even on a harsh grain, I'll probably leave it at about 0.8 of a pixel. And that still feels for me like real film grain. Now, I spent many years in a photographic laboratory and what I do remember is those big meter and a half wide prints rolling off of the machine. When you enlarge a 35 millimeter negative or a 120 millimeter negative to, to those big mural prints, this is sort of the mood I always remember seeing was that, that heavy grain on those enlarged images. So what you must remember is when we're looking at something that's zoomed into 100%, this is a big print if, if it were a print at the end of the day. Okay, what I wanna look at now is that sometimes you are going to have to judge what type of grain suits what image. So for me in her face, this finer grain looks quite natural. The harsh grain for me doesn't feel natural anymore. And the reason why it doesn't feel natural is the fine detail that I have in the hair and the fine detail that I have in the eyelash over here and the grain structure doesn't quite match up. Because if you remember film, well, those of you who have worked with film, the quality and the characteristic of film is that the harsher your grain structure, the more it detracts from focus. So if you wanna know more about how grain, noise, high ISO affects the focus of your image, Check out the link at the end of this video. All I'm saying is choose your grain structure carefully and make sure that it matches up with your image. I'm gonna create one more layer. And the reason why I'm creating one more layer is for you to create an action that you don't need to go in every time and create the grain. So when you've um, got your action palette open, you click on a new action and let's call this one fine grain and set that to record. Okay, so first thing I do is I create a new layer. Edit, full with 50% gray. Okay, and set my blending mode to overlay. Filter, noise, add noise. Now remember this is a fine grain, so I'm gonna look at about 5% and that's, that's quite fine, I'm quite happy with that. We'll call that fine grain. And then I need to blur it. Gwazian blur. Okay, so 0 0.8 that we're using on the harsh grain, it's a bit too much and my fine grain disappears. So what I'll do is I'll take that down to 0 0.5 and have a look at it. Let me take it down to 0.4, that's more accurate. That's, that's a good sharp crisp grain. Okay, so there we go, there's our fine grain. And what you'll do now is up to you. What you can do at this point is you can carry on recording and just say layer flatten image. Okay, and then stop. So at the end of all of this, if you are feeling too lazy to create your own actions, we've uploaded it onto our Facebook page Go and check it out, you can download the file from there. So you'll repeat this process then, and then create a medium grain and create a harsh grain. So on the screen now, we're just gonna run through a few comparisons between the straight noise filter, which is pretty ugly, and some very quick and easy grain effects. This medium grain is just beautiful. It reminds me of standing in a photo laboratory and watching a meter wide print roll out of the dryer and that, that look from a 35 mil blown up to a meter wide, that's what this is. That's all for this one defog, but I will be back to show you how to apply this type of grain to a color image. 
it is slightly different, the steps that you've got to take. Um, so check out for it next time if you enjoyed this grain. It is by far the best and most controllable grain that you'll find on the internet.